Welcome back guys, this is Ivan from BrainBiz.com and in today's tutorial we're going to follow the last tutorial that we did last week and we're going to do a little project using the DigiSpark. Uh, you can check that video right uh, there. So uh, let me switch. The way this is going to work is one of our viewers asked the question to, he wanted to build a, an airplane or drone, RC airplane or drone finder uh, because I guess he lost a plane some, uh, at some point in a cornfield or in a forest. Uh, so if you've ever flown an RCA airplane or drone, uh, you know that crashing, even though it doesn't really matter how good you are, crashing will eventually happen. And if it happens over an area like a cornfield or a forest, uh, the chance of finding that airplane or drone is, are very slim. So what he wanted to do is use a DG Spark like this and that would have a set timer that would be above the duration, the life duration of the battery that's powering the, uh, the airplane. Uh, so basically most batteries and drones and airplanes, uh, they last about 20 minutes. So you would put this timer to let's say 25, 30 minutes and if the alarm sounds and the timer elapsed, technically you could say, well, the plane didn't come back to me and that's why the alarm is sounding. So let's look at the components. Uh, everything is going to be powered using a 9-volt battery. Uh, we have the DigiSpark. We have a buzzer. And we have also, a, I added this, but this is not necessary. It's a 7-segment display that will show the minutes and the seconds counting down. Uh, I like using this because when you plug it in, you can see the countdown, what you set in code. And you can see that it's actually counting down and that it is working. But if you want to save more uh, power and space, you could remove that. But it is an option. So it's a four-digit countdown that will be powered by the DigiSpark. So, so that's the project for today. I'd like to thank uh, Mike uh, that asked this question, and I was in contact with him, and I said I was going to do a tutorial on, uh, on this. So, Mike, hopefully this helps you uh, complete your project and uh, build your own airplane finder. So without further ado, we're going to go look at the code and check how it works, and then we'll come back and uh, see what happens when we plug it in. So let's go check that out. All right, so here's the code that we're going to use today for this tutorial. Uh, as always, we're going to start from the top. So we're including the library at the top uh, for controlling the seven segment display that we're going to use to show the countdown. Um, this was created by Frankie Chu, and you can get more information about his, uh, his library here. And I'll put a link in the description also so you guys can uh, grab that. Uh, then we define the pins that are connected to the display, the seven segment display. So CLK is connected to pin 0 on the DigiSpark, and DIO is connected to pin 1. Uh, then we define a buzzer pin, that's the pin that the buzzer positive lead is connected to, so it's connected to pin 2, and when we put the pin 2 to high, basically the buzzer will sound, and we'll see that down there. Uh, then we have two uh, variables, timer value, that's for the minutes, and timer seconds is for seconds, of course. And then we have some variables here to break down those numbers. So let's say we have 10 minutes, 30 seconds. Then we break down each individual number and put them in these variables here to, for displaying on the seven segment display. We'll see that also. And then we create an instance of the library with the pins that we defined up there. And then this is our main setup. So we set the pin mode of the buzzer pin, which is pin number two, to an output. And we put it to low at the beginning, so that way it is not, it doesn't sound the buzzer. And then we reset the display, we set the brightness, and here we have this little function of the library, dot point, and we say point on. That's to put the center columns that are on these display to on, so it shows up as a, kind of like a clock. So that's how you do that with this library. And then a little delay of 1.5 seconds to let the system, you know, boot and be ready to go. So here's the main loop now, and we check at, right at the beginning if the timer is uh, finished. And we do that in a while loop. So while the timer value, the minutes, are equal to zero, meaning uh, the, there's no more minutes, and the timer seconds is at zero, then what we're going to do, we do this part here, which will flash the display with zeros and sound the buzzer on and off. And we'll see that in the testing. Then we go down. In this part, we break down uh, the numbers into individual numbers so we can display them on the display. So we do if the timer value, uh, the minutes, is greater than 9, that means we have two numbers. So the first number will be equal to, let's say we have, for example, 10 minutes. First number will be equal to 1, second number will be equal to 0. 
else, meaning it is not greater than nine, that means the first number we don't get because we don't want to display anything, and the second number will be equal to whatever the value of the minutes is. And we do the same thing for seconds, as you can see here. So now, if I go down a little bit, so then it's time to display those values. So we clear the display at the beginning. Then we check if the timer value is greater than nine, we display the first number. If it's not, then we only display a second number. And for the seconds, uh, we check if the timer seconds is greater than nine and the timer value is greater than zero. Uh, what that means is that, let's say we have one minute and eight seconds. Well, I want to display the one and I want to display the zero of the seconds and then the nine. But if the minutes are at zero, then I don't want to display zero nine, zero eight, zero seven. I want the zero to be gone. So that's how we achieve that here. Basically, timer seconds needs to be greater than nine and the timer value, the minutes, needs to be greater than zero to display the third number, as you can see here. And then the last one we're always displaying is the last seconds, so we display the fourth number. And once that is displayed, we uh, decrease the seconds to a minus one because we start from uh, 60, 59, 58, 57, and then we do a delay of one second. We're not using an actual timer in uh, this uh, example. Uh, it might not be super accurate in, uh, if you do like a 60 minute, 90 minute countdown, but for our purposes, it's uh, accurate enough. And then after 60 seconds has passed, we check if the timer seconds is equal to minus one, that means it went uh, lower than zero, then the timer value, which is minutes, is decreased by one, and timer seconds back to 59. And then it loops back and does this again. So there you go. So now we're gonna cut and we're gonna upload this code to the DigiSpark and see what happens. So let's go check that out. All right, so here we are. Now we're gonna upload some code to the DigiSpark and we're gonna see the result on um, the little four digit display here. Now, as you can see, I'm gonna use the USB to power and program for now. And near the end, we're gonna plug in the battery, which is right here, uh, which is not plugged in right now. So we will plug that and power the DigiSpark using the battery instead of the USB. But for now, let's start to program at the beginning to see what happens. So let me go to the, as you can see here in the window, time of value is 10 for minutes and five seconds. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna click upload. And you'll see at the bottom here, it's compiling. And there it says plug in device now, we'll time out in 60 seconds. So let's plug it in now. If you want more information, check out our, la our last video that we did on programming the DigiSpark. So let me plug it in. And there it goes. And we can see 10 minutes, three, two, one, zero, and there you go. So now we have nine minutes counting down and we're not displaying the last number here. So now I'm gonna unplug it and change the values so we can see the ending. So let me go up here. So we're gonna put one minute. Actually, we're gonna put zero minutes and we're gonna put, let's say 10 seconds. There we go, so we're going back up, upload, looking down here and it's waiting for me to plug in the device, so let's do that. And there we go, it's done. And now it starts from 10, nine, and the buzzer is right there. So three, two, one, and there you go. So basically that's what will happen when the, uh, let me turn it off. That's, when, that's uh, what will happen when the timer elapses. So it helps you to find, uh, hopefully, uh, your lost plane or drone. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna unplug the USB to prove that we can power this using a nine volt battery. So I'm gonna plug in the power right here. And there we go. So as you can see now, the battery is connected to the DigiSpark. So I'm just gonna connect the battery now. There we go. And there it goes. Same thing happening, counting down from 10 seconds. And there you go. It says loud. And basically, this is a self-contained system that you could use. Let me turn this guy off. 
So there you go guys, simple project. I like the fact that we can see the countdown on the four digit display here. Um, actually, when you plug in the battery, it enables you to confirm that the code and the DigiSpark is working properly, since you can see the countdown. Uh, but like I said, if you don't want to see the countdown, you could always remove this part and uh, just use the buzzer and the DigiSpark. So there you go, guys. I hope uh, you found this project interesting. If you ever fly airplanes and stuff like that, this is, might be something that you would be interested in. So let's go back to the main camera and wrap it up. All right, so that will do it for today's uh, tutorial. Uh, so there you go, a little project using a DigiSpark. Uh, I want to say thank you to Mike again for giving us the suggestion to actually do this tutorial. And hopefully, Mike, uh, if you see this video, uh, this will uh, help you finish uh, your project that you were uh, working on. Uh, now for the next video, I have another project that I'm working on using a DigiSpark. So stay tuned for that. It should be coming in uh, next week. And uh, also, always remember that you can visit us at BrainyBest.com if you need any parts to build your own projects. And if you come to our site and buy stuff from us, it helps us a lot. So that'll do it for today, guys. So until next time, my name is Ivan, and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care. All right, so here we are on the test bench. Uh, I should have plugged, damn it. All right, though, oh no. <clears throat> Uh, we're going to start at the top, so we're including this library called tm1637.h. Basically, it's a um, digital tube library. And uh, I forgot to put the name of the guy here. Uh, this is all the characters that are available with this library, so 0 to 9. And then uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, not G. Damn it. Uh, the loop routine run, runs over and over again forever. So basically, it will loop through this until... Why is this here? Of course, at the beginning it will not, but we need to check it at the beginning so it doesn't uh, go too... Oh, God. Uh, then we display the first number. If it's uh, not bigger than 9, if it is... Uh, then we only display the second number because we don't want to put anything in the, uh, first, uh, the first display if the uh, minutes is... Uh.